Psalm 65 and the 11th verse. Now, this is our theme verse. If you're from around here, then you know that this is our theme verse for 2019. The Lord spoke to me at the end of a meeting, October the 28th, 2018, last year, almost a a year ago exactly, on a Sunday night, preaching a pastor's appreciation service in Bristol, Tennessee. All of a sudden, I heard the Lord say, 2019 is the fruitful year. Hallelujah. When I shared that, uh, I shared that publicly that night. Uh, at least two I know that night caught hold of it. That's Caleb and Allie. Hallelujah. And uh, praise God, that fruit's about to be seen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they got hold of it, and the doctors had given them some negative reports where uh, bearing children were concerned. But look what the Lord has done. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. And it looks like Judah's about ready to go. Praise God. After all our prayer time, I looked up and and Allie's place was vacant. And I said, oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Judah. Amen. Praise God. He's making his presence felt. And that's awesome. So it's the fruitful year. Praise God. Psalm 6511 in the New Living Translation. Can you read it aloud with me and fill the atmosphere with it? You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. I think we ought to say it again. You, that's to God. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that last phrase again, because some of you are experiencing some hard pathways right now as we get ready to close out this year, as we're in harvest time, you're experiencing some hard pathways. But I just declare the promise over you afresh. Even the hard pathways will overflow with the abundance of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, if you believe it for yourself, shout it really loud. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look with me now at 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter. Just two verses of scripture, verse 11 and verse 12. I want to read a little story to you I've never preached on before. And last, actually, last night, I was, I was ready to preach in a different direction this morning and driving home, still praying after a long day of work and some time in the office alone, driving home, still praying. I just heard the, the Lord speak to me about this, this dude's story, this, this guy's story that I've never preached from before, but you won't be blessed by it. Let me remind you of him and uh, maybe introduce him to somebody. Verse, verse 11 and 12, we're going to read. Now, this is in the midst of a recollection and historical accounting of David's mighty men. David's mighty men. And here's just one of David's mighty men. It says in verse 11, and after him, that is the dude, the guy previous, was Shema, the son of A.G., the Hararite. The Philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a place of ground full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines. So there's a field of lentils. A field of, some call them peas, some call them beans, the sort of a hybrid of both, but there's a field of lentils there, and the Philistines have got a troop of soldiers, of warriors, and they say, we're going to take this field from the Israelites. And all the people fled. Everybody say it with me. All the people fled. But Shema stationed himself in the middle of the field, defended it, and killed the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Oh, hallelujah. I like guys like this, don't you? Everybody else is running, and he says, nope. I'm not running. I'm going to defend my field. Hallelujah. Come on. I came to tell somebody this morning, it's time to fight for your field. 
I felt the Holy Ghost say amen. I said, it's time to fight for your field. Defend the field God has given you, especially at harvest time, especially at harvest time. Come on. We've declared the prophetic word. This is the fruitful year. And we've seen God bring it to pass. Not just in babies that are going to be birthed. Hallelujah. Uh, Thomas and, 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 and his precious bride have a beautiful one that's coming. There she is. I didn't know you were in here. Coming as well. Miss Susie's got. Uh, amen. And this it's really close to. Hallelujah. And so it's a fruitful year. Somebody say Amen. But not just that. There have been, I look around, there have been people getting new homes and, and, and people, God's blessed with newer vehicles. Come on. Hallelujah. Promotions have been happening in this, in this room. I've been promotion after promotion. The favor, I wish somebody would hear me, the favor of God. Hallelujah. How many, I mean, major things have happened. One young lady got a full scholarship. Little Miss Caitlin, full scholarship, had applied for it three years ago. To totally forgot about it and gets a phone call out of, out of nowhere saying, are you still interested? Hallelujah. And a full scholarship to film school down in Texas. Come on. Hallelujah. This is the fruitful year. That's just scratching the surface of things that we've witnessed God doing personally in, in Margini's life. We've seen it and in your lives and we're rejoicing. But how many, how many just believe God's not finished yet? Yeah. Come on. God's not finished yet. We got a young man visiting with us today. Ethan, good to see you home. Hallelujah. He joined the Marines and uh, uh, we thank God. Come on, give him a, a hand clap of appreciation for serving right now in our nation's military and just just got posted where where'd you get posted quantico virginia, quantico, virginia. It, it was what top three percent that get posted there is that right top three percent come on one of our very own top three percent in the marine corps posted at quantico come on can you give god a praise and 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 give ethan a congratulations it's a fruitful year but God's not finished yet. In fact, I'm going to say this is a fruitful season. And I believe it's going to, it's not going to end on December the 31st. I believe it's going to roll over into 2020. I wish somebody would help me praise God. And we're going to see, and, and we've seen God fill this auditorium different occasions this year. In fact, ladies, I, I forgot to apologize earlier for our condition in the ladies' restroom. We're, we're a little uh, discombobulated back there. We apologize for that. But, but look, I'll tell you what, what I, I don't exactly know what happened, but what I do know is we had 200 plus women for our Fashion Ladies Conference just a few weeks ago. Hallelujah. And this older building just couldn't handle that, I guess. So, so we apologize for, for any, any uh, odor. Do you like that? Hallelujah. I just said it a little French and makes it a little more palatable, right? Any odor, any, any discomfort, we apologize for that. But I just declare, this is, the, this, this is the fruitful season that we're in. Hallelujah. But now listen, I reminded you of this in the beginning of the year when I preached about the fruitful year. I reminded you that when we begin to sow, everybody say it with me, sow. Sowing is key. Everything you're reaping in your life right now is a result of seed sown. And you've got to keep sowing. And if you want better tomorrows, you sow better seed today. How, there's a law. It's just a law of God. Whatsoever a man or woman sows, that is what they're going to reap. It's, just, it's a law of God. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap the corruption of flesh. But if you sow the seeds of your thoughts, your words, your actions, your money, your living, if you sow the seed of all of that to the spirit, the promise is you will reap the spiritual things of life everlasting and life abundantly. Hallelujah. It's just a law. It doesn't matter if you like the law or not. You may not like the law of gravity, but go to the top of the Empire State Building and jump. 
Whether you like the law, you may disagree with the law, you may curse the law of gravity all the way down. But you're not going to change that law. I'm losing amens right now. And there is a law of God. Whatever we sow, that is what we're going to reap. So how many want to sow better things? And how many, how many have sown some bad things and you lift your hand and say, Lord, I ask you for grace and mercy and a crop failure. Come on, in Jesus' name. But how many have sown some good things in your past, some good things in your life, and the enemy's been trying to hold up your harvest from that good seed? I dare you to lift up your hand and say, but this is my season. Come on, hallelujah. This is, I felt the witness of the Spirit again. I said, this is my season. Hallelujah. This is my season, but every good seed sown. And the good harvest that will come is going to be met by opposition from your enemy. He does not want us to reap the good harvest of God's grace and glory. He wants to stop you. The enemy does not. You sowed the seed. Oh, okay. Devil couldn't stop you. He didn't talk you out of it. You sowed it. He doesn't then say, oh, well, they're going to have a great harvest. No, he goes to work to try to keep you from harvesting the harvest. How many know a, a farmer's work is not finished when the seed is sown? His work continues. There's a little season of waiting, but he's got to be ready in the season of waiting to take and reap the harvest when it's time. So the enemy's trying to, to talk us down, talk us out of reaping the harvest. So that's why in Galatians 6 verse 9, the scripture says, let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. If we do not lose heart. Now I want you to, I want to, I had to preach fast this morning, but I want you to grab hold of this. He said, don't grow weary. So punch your neighbor, would you pat him and say, don't get, don't grow weary. That, that weariness is beyond tired. It's, you know what I'm talking about. Weariness is that point of exhaustion. It's that point of giving up. It's that point of, I no longer care. Do not grow weary. Now, if God tells me not to grow weary, it means no matter how tempted I am to be weary, I can say no. I can refuse weariness. What, what do I do to refuse weariness? Uh, Isaiah 40, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Come on, that's one reason for the gathering. Are you hearing me? I said that's one reason for this gathering. We come together waiting upon the Lord. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you when you leave here, you're going to leave with renewed strength. Hallelujah. So let us not grow weary while doing what is good and right. For in due season, due season, sometimes we wear ourselves out because we want the harvest out of season. So we're frustrating ourselves, messing with our own heads because we want it now. Have you noticed Jesus never compares the kingdom of heaven to technology? He always compares it to agriculture. Mm, come on. We're a technological generation. It's harder for us to grasp these realities. But the reality is it is seed sown, seed time then harvest. Things rarely ever happen like that in the kingdom of God. I'm going to say that over here. I didn't get much help over there. I said things rarely ever happen like that in the kingdom of God. In the economy of God, there's almost always a season where we're waiting for that promise to manifest. But would you lift your hand and say every seed has a season? Mm. I said every seed has a season. Glory to God. I'm going to throw the microphone down and shout for myself a second. Every seed has a season. I've got some seed in the ground. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Praise God. Listen, the only people that get upset when the rains start coming are those who have no seed in the ground. 
Rain starts falling and they like, oh, it's going to mess up our picnic. It's going to mess up our softball game. It's going to mess up our soccer tournament. Oh, I wish that rain would go. God move the rain. But everybody that's got seed in the ground, when that rain starts falling, we start rejoicing, saying, yeah, hallelujah. Come on, it's the same in the house of God. When the spirit of God and the rain start falling, those people that don't have much seed in the spiritual things, they say, oh boy, I hope this doesn't take too long. I don't know. Hope they don't go over, over our religious hours. Uh, um, yeah, but those that have seed in the ground, they like pour it out, Holy Ghost, pour it out, Spirit of Grace. Come on, Hallelujah! I believe, I believe in the Lift Church. We got a lot of seed, good seed in good ground. I think you ought to take thirty seconds in worship and praise God that it's season. The season of your seed is upon you, and the rains are falling. Hallelujah! Oh, glory to it. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. And so Shema, there's three things I want to learn from Shema real quick. They're, here he is. Here he is. The Philistines, they're out there harvesting. I want you to notice something. They're harvesting lentils and the Philistines come in and everybody else runs. But Shema says, I'm not giving up my, my pea pat. I'm not giving up my harvest of lentils. Now look, hallelujah. Here's three keys we can learn from him. Number one, know the value of your field. You got to know the value of your field. The field represents your assignment. Every one of us are under assignment, own assignment. You've got to know the value of the assignment you're currently in. Your assignment today may look very different. I've, I've got some, I, I'm just uh, honored, Margie and I are honored and humbled that, that God has brought some, some seasoned leaders to us here at the Lift Church, some seasoned men and women of God who have pastored, who have led congregations for years, who have a lot of experience in prayer and travel in different areas under your belt. I, we are so honored and humbled that God has brought uh, these seasoned leaders to the Lift and they become part of our covenant family. Hallelujah. How many understand that, that they're, there's, they're in a different uh, assignment? They're in a different uh, will the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And it's not less than what has been. It's just different than what has been. Remember, I preached on assignments a few weeks ago when Philip left the big crusade in Samaria. God's instruction was to go to the desert. That didn't make any sense. Leave the thousands in the meeting and walk a lonely desert road. And he encounters one man from Ethiopia. And it seems like he's left his great breakthrough and now he's over here doing something insignificant. But if you study history, you discover, hallelujah, that that one man from Ethiopia that Philip led to the Lord and baptized would go back to Ethiopia and turn that whole nation upside down for Christ. Hallelujah. And then you would discover that in 2019, the Ethiopian president would be a Pentecostal, hallelujah, who just won the Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, I don't know if you're hearing me right now. Hallelujah. And so you say, well, can we trace? I believe, I believe you could trace back to Philip's obedience in that second assignment. Come on. Hallelujah. So you're on assignment right now. And no matter that it may not seem as big or as glamorous as past assignments, if you'll value the field God has you in. Come on, are you still with me right now? He had to value the field. Turn around and tell somebody, you have a field. And the enemy wants your field. Hear me. The enemy wants your field. Your field is, it includes your marriage. Mm. Your children. Your field includes the church God's placed you in. Your job, wherever God has you, that's your field. And the enemy wants your field. Yeah. Hallelujah. He wants your field. You've got to value the field and you've got to value the harvest in the field. Notice, notice this was not a field of diamonds. This is a field of lentils. Oh, again, come on. I'm going to lose amens right now. 
Oh, I'd, I'd stand and fight if it were a field of diamonds. But this is peas. I can grow more peas next year. But Shema valued the field. And he valued the harvest in the field. I wish somebody would hear me. Hallelujah. So he stood and fought. Come on, you with me right now? By the way, the enemy, it, it seemed insignificant. Here's something you need to learn. The enemy is going to attack first what he thinks he can talk you out of easiest. Why does the enemy come for that field of peas? Because he thinks if I can get this field, I can set up a base to get the city. He said, I think they'll give up this field because it's just an insignificant field of peas. So if I can, I wish somebody would hear me right now. So if he, he thought, if I can get this field, then I'll have a launching place to where I can get the city. Come on, that's how the enemy fights you. He comes at you to, and he attacks that insignificant thing, that little thing. And he thinks if he can talk you out of fighting over that area, if he can get you to compromise in this area, it may seem little. Oh, there's should be a, there should be a verse somewhere in the Bible that said it's the little fox that destroys the little fox. See, we're always looking, we always looking at, at the big thing. And, and so there are people under the sound of my voice right now. You think you're doing great in your life. I see people posting on Facebook. They think they're doing great in their life. What they don't understand is they've, they've quit fighting in some areas they determined were insignificant. And the enemy is setting up camp. And getting ready to launch an all-out assault on the city from a great vantage point that was given to the devil by the compromise in our life. Come on, come on. Somebody lift up your hand and say, I got to, uh, 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 right, let me quote Reinhard Bonnke. Mind in the beginning what matters in the end. It may look like an insignificant field, but the vantage point for the enemy from that position would be dangerous to the city. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Anybody with me? Am I doing all right today? You're getting something from this? See, the enemy's attacking us right now. It's harvest time, and the enemy's attacking, wanting our field. And he doesn't attack the field of diamonds first. He attacks the field of peas. If I can get your beans... If I can keep you thinking, well, it's, it's not diamonds, not great value. He said, I'm gaining ground. But thank God, Shema, everybody else running. But Shema said, wait a minute. Shema wasn't just looking at the present. He was looking at the future. He was strategic. He said, I can't let the devil, I can't let the Philistines, the enemy, have this field of peas. If they get this field of peas, they've got great strategy to take the city. So if I'm going to take a stand, I've got to take it in this insignificant area. Come on, this sounds like integrity to me. I said, this sounds like integrity. You're, you're, you and I don't walk in integrity when it's just in the eye of the people. We walk in integrity when we do things in dark that nobody else can see. And it seems like it's overkill and it seems like it's unimportant. But we dare in the dark. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes. Said we dare in the dark. I can't remember if it's Joe Frazier or, or Norton, but when one of the great boxing champions made this statement, he got up and ran every morning at 4 a.m. And somebody asked him, why do you run at 4 a.m. every morning? And he said, because what I do in the dark is going to be evident when I'm in the lights. Wow. 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 Mm -mm. So Shema stood. Everybody say he stood. Yes. Notice he stood in the center of the field he valued. He did not stand in, on the fringes. He planted himself in the center of the field. Well, I hope you hear me. He was not contemplating retreat. He, was not, he wasn't on the edge where he might could get away. He made a decision. I will win here or I will die here, but I'm not moving from here. 
oh, if God can find some people at the Lift Church who will say, we want real awakening in our generation. We want a real revival in our young men and young women. We want, we want God to have his way in glory among this region. If God can find some people that in the insignificant things will plant ourselves in the middle of the field and say, we will die here or we will win. And notice, notice he stood alone. He stood alone. He valued the field so much that though everybody else left, he stood. Oh, I feel that burning in my soul. Can God find some people that whatever the field is he's called you to, that wherever it is he's placed you and planted you, you will stand in the middle of it. And when everybody else is retreating and when they're saying, hey, there's no reason to stand here, can God find somebody that'll say, I will stand. Yes. Oh, yes. hallelujah. Come on. So you got to know the value of the assignment. You got to value it. You got to see it not as insignificant compared to a field of diamonds, but you see it as this is what I have. This is where God's placed me. And I think it's valuable. Number two, you got to know and value the season that you're in. I don't have time to preach all this, but it was the season of harvest. The lentils were ready to be harvested. Please hear me. Some of you are under attack right now. And, and, and it, the enemy's trying to wear you down. He's trying to wear us down. But can I just remind you that the enemy is not attacking an empty field. He's coming after a field that is ripe for harvest. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. I said he's not attacking an empty field. He's coming after a field that is ripe for harvest. He doesn't attack where there's nothing. He sees the value that you may not see. So we value the field. Somebody lift your hand and say, I value the field. Would you lift your other hand and say, I value the season I'm in. It may not be the most comfortable season. It may not be the rejoicing season. In fact, it may be the weeping season. But he who goes forth bearing precious seed, weeping, though he weeps, he shall come in again, rejoicing with shouts of joy, bringing the harvest with him. Hallelujah. Some Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody say it with me. Glory to God. Proverbs 10 verse 5 says, he who gathers in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame. It's important that we learn to discern the season that we're in. Some people are sleeping through harvest. I'm going to say this one more time because I just feel the Holy Spirit wanting to make sure it is enunciated clearly to us today. Harv getting a harvest from God is not just about the seed we sow. It is also about our reaping that seed. And look at me. The seed is not sown automatically by God. Neither is the harvest reaped by God. You sow the seed. You reap the harvest. I sow the seed. I reap the harvest. What does that mean? The faith it takes to sow the seed is still needed to reap the harvest. The effort it takes, the sacrifice it takes to sow the seed is still needed to reap the harvest. Hallelujah. Galatians 6, 9 in the New Living Translation. So let's not get tired of doing what is good at just the right time. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Somebody say hallelujah. Can I preach five more minutes? Because I got the third point right here. Number one, know the value of the field, the assignment. Some of you don't feel, I got to move on from that, but we've been so blinded by the idea of purpose-driven living and the glamorization of what it means to live a purpose-filled life. We've been so blinded by the Americanizing of the gospel that we haven't learned to really value the assignment of today. The place God's placed us. 
We, we, we have people on church teams. Thank God, not here. But on church teams, we have people that are only serving in order to get promoted. God promotes those who serve, but he promotes those who serve faithfully. And you're not faithful if you're not joyful. Faithfulness is not endurance by itself. It's enduring with joy. Hallelujah. And so if you're just enduring where you are until you can get to a better place, I just want to tell you something. You may get to that better place, but it won't be God's promotion. It'll be your kicking doors down and, and you're making it happen. Hallelujah. But if you learn to be faithful where God has placed you and, and value the assignment of the field he has you in right now, come on. It may not be glamorous. It may be lonely and it may seem like you, you gotta, you gotta fight till death's door but if you'll do it he'll be with you and a great victory will be won hallelujah and and in the season come on somebody lift your hand and say i'm in one of those long long drawn out seasons of waiting but it's harvest time i said but it's harvest time i said it's harvest time and here's the third key. Here's the third key. You got to know the value of the field, know the value of the season, and then you got to know the value of you. You got to know the value of you. You got to believe in the one who called you. And you got to know that he believes in you. I love there's a little New Testament story, Matthew 14, it's recorded where the disciples are in, in the boat. And if you study the story out in the different synoptic gospels, you discover something amazing. Jesus is walking on the water and one of the writers says he would have passed them by. They, they're, to, they're tolling in rowing. They're tolling for hours. They've been tolling. But when you read the text carefully, Jesus did not walk on the water to their boat. To relieve them from their toil. Well, we're getting quiet now. That's the modern Jesus. That wants to always relieve you from your sweat. Well, we're getting quiet in here again. But the Jesus of the Bible. The Bible says he would have passed them by. Except they cried out. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, he's, just, he's, just, he's on his way to the place he told them to go. They're rowing there. He's just walking. They see him walking and go, ah! he says, oh, don't be afraid. It's just me. Come on. You say, well, what does that have to do with us? Well, here, here's the thing. He told them to go to the other side. The winds are contrary. The waves are contrary, but he has absolute confidence that they'll get to the other side. In other words, we don't just believe in him. He believes in us. Oh, I don't think you're hearing me. He believes in what he's called. If he spoke his word to you and you received it, come on, somebody lift your hand and say, he believes in me. Yeah. Glory to God. He believes in me. Shema's name. You know, names are prophetic in Hebrew, in that culture. And Shema's name means loss. Hmm. His mama, his daddy named him Loss. But his dad's name, Agi, however you say it, his name means fugitive. He's on the run. And so on the run, sounds like a country song. He's on the run and they named their baby loss or destruction. It can be translated. Or ruin. Or astonishment. Whew. So. When David encounters Shema, where did he find him? In the caves. David found all of his mighty men hiding in caves. And the Bible says that all of those men were in distress, discontent, and debt. So David's mighty men did not appear mighty at first. But they encountered a king. But they didn't just encounter a king. They stuck with a king. Oh, I don't know if you heard me. 
They, they stuck Shema, whose name means loss, whose daddy was a fugitive. Shema, whose name means ruin. He stuck with King David. And so he became a man who saw his life turned around. Come on. Can you lift your hand and say his dedication? I, I had typed in, I had typed in his encounter with the king turned his life around. But then I had to change that and say it wasn't his encounter. A lot of people encountered David and the anointing God had put on on David's life and they never had a turnaround. Nabal was a fool. He encountered David but he died as a fool. It wasn't just an encounter with the king but Shema stuck with the king and dedicated himself to the king. Come on, I hope you hear me. I've seen people in our services, in our youth camps. I've seen young men and young women. I've seen people have amazing encounters with God only to stray not many months later. And I shake my head and weep and cry and say, God, what is it? But it is not. Look, I believe in the God encounter. How many want to have an encounter of the God kind? I want to see that happen in Sevierville like never before. But would you lift your hand and say, it's not those who encounter him. It's those who dedicate them. Oh, hallelujah. And I dare every dedicated person to lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm not going anywhere. Hi, hallelujah. Come on, somebody wave and say, where you lead me. That's where I'm going. I'm, hallelujah. I'm going to follow you, Lord Jesus. David's mighty men were, were discontents. They were in distress and they were in heavy, heavy debt. But they stuck with the king and they became mighty, mighty men. Ooh, hallelujah. You see, Shema's name means ruin, loss. It looked like, it looked like his destiny was, was predicated by his history. Listen, look at me. Satan knows your name, but he calls you by your failures, your sins. The Lord God, the Lord Jesus knows your sins, but he calls you by your name. I don't think you hurt me. The devil knows your name, but he calls you by your sin, by your weakness, by your failures. But Jesus knows your sin, your weakness, and your failures, but he calls you by your name. And Brad, he doesn't just call you what your mom and dad named you. The book of Revelation says when we, when we finally graduate, we're going to be given a new name. It's been given to you already. It's what he already calls you. Oh, I was me. Hallelujah. Come on. I dare you to lift up your hand and say, he calls me by the name that he's given me. And the name that he's given me is not one of loss or ruin or hallelujah or defeat. Somebody wave and say his name. Hallelujah. For me is one of victory. It's one of overcoming grace and power. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody else feeling what I'm feeling in here? Glory to God. See, Shema had to come to know and value who God said he was. His name, watch this, his name meant loss. Because he persevered. I'm closing on this. Shema changed his destiny by perseverance. By sticking it out. He had a persevering spirit. Let me quote from Daniel Kalinda. I love this quote. We are always looking for shortcuts, tips, and tricks. But I'm afraid there's no way around this principle. You can be extraordinarily gifted, talented, anointed, and blessed. But without persistence, you will have little impact. Because the great victories are always on the other side of great battles. Come on, I want to encourage somebody. You're in a great battle right now. The great victory is on the other side. Come on, hallelujah. The word persevere is made of the prefix per, which means through, and the word severe. Through severity. That's what perseverance is. Victory comes to those who press through severe battles to the other side without quitting. Shema stood in the middle of the field and said, I will win here or I will die here. But I will not run away here. 
Come on. Someone said, I can't verify it, so I'm not saying it. But someone said that Shema's name means runaway. I can't verify that, so I won't say that. But what I do know is that's what the enemy wanted him to do. And that's what the enemy wants you to do, run away. But I dare somebody lift your hand and say, I'm not running away. Come on, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee. I love this quote. Bruce Lee said, the successful warrior is the average man with laser-like folk. Oh, glory to God. Alec McKenzie said, the ability to concentrate, to persevere on a course without distraction or diversion is a power that has enabled men, watch this, the ability to concentrate, to persevere on a course without distraction or diversion is a power that has enabled men, and I would say in women, of moderate capability to reach heights of attainment that have eluded the genius. They have no secret formula other than to persevere. Shema had no secret formula other than to take a stand and refuse to run away. Oh, hallelujah. I just feel the Holy Ghost saying this to, to dozens of us today. The enemy's trying to talk us down, trying to talk us out, trying to talk us to the fringe, trying to talk us into giving up this insignificant area in our world, in our life. But I dare somebody who will say if Shema, if Shema could beat a whole troop of Philistines by himself with the help of God, then I can stand in the middle of my assigned field and defeat every power of darkness. Come on, if that's you, I dare you to stand to your feet with me and lift your hand high and say I'm not running away I'm not going to the right or to the left I'm in the center come on hands lifted all over this house hands lifted say lobo sundra bahaya sandre e sundra bahaya rabandre e sekedre bahaya let the let the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you in the inner person make a decision right now I'm not going anywhere Joshua 1 verse 9 God said to Joshua have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So like Shema, stand firm. When it feels like you're all alone, stand firm. When it looks like you don't have any money, stand firm. When it seems Everybody's turning against you. Stand and see the salvation of your God. When you've fallen on your face in weakness, time after time, crawl up again by the grace of God and take your stand one more time and say, I'm not running away from Jesus. I'm not running away from God. I'm not, come on, I'm not running away from church. The devil's number one tactic in people's life is to get them to run away. To get them to pull back. Sin causes people to hide. Adam, where are you? I hid myself because I was afraid. For I was naked. Who told you? Ah, hallelujah. Come on. If you can dare to believe you are who God says you are. If you can dare to believe that you have what God says you have. If you can dare to believe that God is with you right there in the middle of your pea patch. And if you'll take a stand, you'll win against a platoon of the enemy. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Come on, I dare, I dare some shamas to lift a voice of, 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 of utter, utter victory. I mean to lift a voice of resistance to the enemy and a confident victory through the Lord your God come on can we can we do what the psalmist David said maybe maybe he did it thinking of Shema clap your hands all you people and shout unto God with a voice of Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yeah. say this is how I find my back how I find my battle. This is how we fight. This is how I find my battle. We're not quitters. This is how we're not running away with persons.
perseverance. This is how I find my bound. We're taking our stand in the this middle of our I field. Find my hey. This is how I find my bound. This is how it may look. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, God wrought a great victory it may look that day. Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I find my battles. Oh, this is how I find my battles. This is how I fight my battles. The king has one more move. somebody to say it the king has one more move and I dare you to lift your hand and say and it's through me come on it's through me I'm gonna stand my ground I'm gonna stand my ground don't miss the last phrase in that verse verse 12 and the Lord the Lord the Lord brought about a great victory that day it wasn't Shema's might. It wasn't Shema's military power. It was Shema taking a stand. And the Lord said, if you'll take a stand, son, I'll stand with you. Hey, hallelujah. And I hear the Holy Ghost saying, children, if you'll keep taking a stand, I'll take the stand with you. And no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that's risen against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Because I, the Lord, am with you. Hallelujah. I know, I know. I know it's, it's afternoon. But, but I just don't think we can leave here until I do what I, I felt the Holy Ghost spoke to me to do. He said at the end of this message for me to, to make a call. For me to say to some Shema's in here. To challenge you. Simple thing. May just take two minutes. But to challenge you. To, if you'll say, if you'll say, I hear that. I received that and I'm going to take a stand in the middle of my field. I think for you to take that stand in the middle of your field, here's what I felt the Lord said to challenge you to leave where you are and to come stand for, to make a move, to stand in the middle of the field symbolically and say, I am not backing up. I am not giving up. I am not letting the devil have my children. I am not letting the devil have my bee patch. I'm not letting the enemy have these things that others tell me. Go ahead, let it go. Go ahead, move on. Count that as your loss. Your name means loss anyway. Count that as your loss and you move on to something else. I refuse. I'm not letting go of this place God has assigned me. This is the field he gave me. This is the promise he made me. And the devil can't have it. And the devil can't have my children. And the devil can't have Come on. Come on. You need to prophesy right now. The enemy can't have the ministry God's called me to. He gave he can't have the breakthrough. He can't have my health. He can't have my finances. Devil, you're a liar. We're standing in the middle of our pee patch. And we're standing. This is how we fight our battles. We may look like we're surrounded by the enemy. But God is with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Come on, come on. Bring it. it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. Bible says he fought with an oak ox goat. He didn't have he didn't even have a sword. He didn't even have proper equipment with him. He just picked up an ox. Hallelujah. You may not feel properly equipped. 
But if you take your stand and know that God is with you, it's not about your equipment. It's about his equipping. Not by might or power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, hallelujah. I know this, this seems a little strange, but will you just look, act like you got an ox goad in you? Oh, prodder. Look, maybe looked a little like a sword. Yeah. I got this microphone. I purposely like this heavier microphone. So I can whip. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If I wanted to and the Holy Spirit didn't make and fall, I... Just kidding, just kidding. This is the year of overflow. This is the season. The enemy, the enemy's come. Listen, the enemy is coming in right now at your harvest time to try to intimidate you and get you to run away. But I believe I'm preaching to some shamas. Thomas, we're not backing up. We're going to see the salvation of our God. He's our help. He's our help. He's our help. Hallelujah. So take that, take that, that instrument and just, just say, I'm going to wield this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to reap my heart. I'm not going to grow weary doing what is good, but I'm, I'm renewing my strength and the joy of the Lord's salvation as I wait on the Lord. And I'm going to stand until my enemy is defeated. The king has one more move, and it's through me. I'm going to say that again. I said it's through me. I feel like saying that again because some of us are, we keep looking for it to come from the north, the south, the east. And we lift our eyes under the hills. But notice that verse. I will lift my eyes under the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He didn't say his help comes from the hills. He said, I'm looking to the hills. And maybe, 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 maybe the psalmist was looking to Mount Zion. But he said, I'm looking to the hills. But my help is not coming from hills. My help is coming from the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth. So you may be in a valley right now. You're just trying to glimpse the hills through the fog. But come on, your help comes from the Lord, from the Lord. It's not from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Somebody lift your hand and say, he's put a deposit inside me. Hallelujah. And I just believe in the name of Jesus, he's got to move. The king has one more move in my life and through my mouth and through my hands and through my prayer and through my praise and through my dance. The king has a another move hallelujah and I'm gonna win the day in the field that he's called me to so come on you ought to lift your voice if you believe that and give the Lord the greatest prophetic shout of Hallelujah. Now, Father, I pray in any area of compromise in our life. I pray any area where we've given up what we thought was insignificant ground. I pray you'd have mercy on us. I pray for the gift of repentance to be released. That we will change our thinking about the insignificance of that action those thoughts, those things we hear, those things we see, and that we'll take back that ground in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that strongholds of the enemy are being demolished in our lives. Oh, hallelujah. And I thank you for the victory that is ours in Christ. In Jesus' name, can you just find somebody, just one other person that you can agree with right now in prayer? Father, I thank you for strength that's coming into lives. Some that have been wearied by the journey, wearied by the battle, wearied by the warfare. 
But I thank you that even as we've waited in your presence, as we have responded to come to the middle of the field and say, we will not give up this ground. I thank you for strength that is coming. Lord, I declare the, the word that Paul spoke by the Holy Ghost in Ephesians, that every believer here today is being strengthened with might in the inner man. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray any backslider on the sound of my voice, any, anyone living in great compromise or small compromise, I pray that right now, today, is a moment of reckoning, a moment of humbling of ourselves, and of repenting and asking you to have mercy in our lives, and a renewal of our dedication to you in the name of Jesus. Come on, will you do that all over this room? All over this room. Will you just let him deal with you and will you respond to the dealing of the king? And will you ask him to have mercy on you and, and restore you? Come on, somebody, somebody need to repent of sin and be released from it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, come on. This field may represent your marriage this morning. It may represent a child this morning. It may represent a promise, whatever it is. Maybe all of those things and more. Stand your ground. Fight. Fight. God said, I'll stand with you. I'll stand with you. I'll stand with you. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I'll stand with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Praise God. Praise God.